Hey guys, um, this is Brevin King 1340 or Nick. Um, I'm here to talk about the NHL draft, which goes on tonight um, at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Um, this draft has gotten a lot of negative publicity over the last year, considering um, the talent that was in last year's draft and the amount of talent that's apparently in next year's draft. And this one kind of gets like a bad rap as like not really coming close to those drafts. Well, I kind of disagree. I mean, I think there's not as much high-end talent in this draft as there was last year and next year. But there's a lot of just solid talent. Like, I remember last year's draft, after like 10th overall, it kind of evened out a little bit. This draft is kind of like that. It's just a whole bunch of like 10th overall and, and afters. I mean, it's not to say that guys like Reinhardt and Bennett and Ekblad aren't high-end talent or top 10 picks in other drafts. It's just to say that it's a lot more... There's, there's a lot less separate, separating each player in this draft. Um, but anyways, Detroit picks 15th tonight. And there's I don't really think there's a lot of bad moves Detroit can make in this draft, honestly. Um, they have a lot of choices. They can go either... They can draft for need, which Detroit needs centers. They really do. And um, uh, let's see. They could go best player available, which I think would be the best way to go, actually. And, um, I mean, but there's a lot of things they can do. The only thing I would be disappointed with is a defenseman. And, and that's not really saying much because if um, Honka or Flurry fell to 15th, I wouldn't be that opposed to taking them. That wouldn't really actually be a very bad thing to me. But um, as far as guys that I would go for personally, um, the one that I, the one player that I really want probably is going to go later in the first round. That's why I wouldn't mind trading down. But they've um, Holland and Babcock have also made comments saying that they are kind of opposed to moving down this year. Um, but they always say, I mean, talk is cheap with those two. They always say things and completely do other things to contradict it. But um, the player I want is Nikita Sherbak. He's a Russian forward, um, plays in the WHL. Um, he reminds me a lot of Evgeny Malkin, and that's not really, I'm not trying to say he's the next Evgeny Malkin by any means, but like when you watch him carry the puck through the zone, he, it looks almost identical to Evgeny Malkin, and even though I wasn't really impressed that much with his shot, he, his goals that he scores are kind of based on opportunity, opportunity and just, you know, burying it when he has the, when he has the chance, which I think is something you really can't teach. I mean, you can teach a lot of things, but when it comes to, like, when you're picking at 15th, you don't want a player that you're going to have to completely rework part of their game. You just, you, you don't want that at 15th overall. And I think Sherback would be a great pick because I don't think he'd really have to improve much in his game to really make that next jump to the NHL, AHL, whatever. But I think he'll fall to, like, early 20s. I think a team like St. Louis will probably get him, which I think if... A great trade for us would be if we could trade down to St. Louis and get, you know, swap first first round picks, and then we'll take, like, either their 52nd or their 33rd overall pick. Either way, I mean, that's, but who's to say they even want to move up? So that's kind of, like, the main thing there. Um, as far as more, like, realistic options, <clears throat> I think Larkin, Dylan Larkin, would probably be the most tailor-made wings pick because he is a center. He's committed to U of M, and quite frankly, I mean, if those two things don't already tell the whole tale, I don't know what will. Um, I think he has a definitely probably the biggest chance of being drafted by Detroit. Um, McCann is up there too, but I'm not really a huge fan um, of McCann because, I mean, he has a great defensive game, but when he was drafted in the OHL, they expect him to be this huge goal scorer and he's when you look at his numbers they're kind of underwhelming so scouts don't really know where to peg him they don't know if he's going to be like this late bloomer or if the scoring is going to come back or anything like that so it's kind of weird i don't see him becoming much more than like a third liner personally which i think if you're drafting 15th overall you should probably be trying to aim a little higher than that but at the same time if you look at 15th overall picks the last 10 years they've I think only two of them have really stuck out. I don't remember. I remember one of them. Eric Carlson is one of them. But um, the other one was like 
eight, nine years ago that ended up turning out to be a great player, and the other eight were kind of duds. So it's tough to say. I mean, I guess in that case, you'd take a third liner any day. But at the same time, I kind of want Detroit to aim a little bit higher than that. Um, there's a lot of trade rumors actually surrounding Detroit this year, which is kind of odd. Um, it's it's a little more than the usual prospects. I mean, every year Detroit's always around Keith Yandel and Alex Edler. And for once, there's a defenseman in there that's not one of those two, and that's Tyler Myers is actually, um, Detroit's actually very interested in him, which I'm very happy about, because I think that'd be a great fit. I think if you put um, him with Danny DeKaiser, that would be an amazing defensive pairing, okay? But um, I don't know how much they would want for one. I mean, TSN reported it, so it's fairly reliable. Um... Out of all the trade rumors that Detroit is around, um, I would say that would be the one that I would go after. Detroit's also in on Ryan Kessler. I don't want him personally, but I, depending on what they can get him for, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be mad about it. It's just if they get Ryan Kessler, it's like, okay, we still have Stephen Weiss. What are you gonna do with him? You can't trade him because he has a no move clause. But I don't think. Detroit is going to get Ryan Kessler, but Tyler Myers, you never know. That would actually be a very beneficial pick. The guy's only 24 years old, and I mean, we all remember his first couple seasons, he was great. He's just kind of regressed a little bit, and I think maybe playing for a bad team in Buffalo might have a lot to do with that, but I think that would be a great trade. I don't know if I'd give up the first this year for him. If you can, if you could build it around like a very good prospect in a second, well, we don't have a second. Never mind that. <laughs> Completely forgot about the Leguan trade, which I like to forget about. Um, but yeah, I think that'd be a great trade, a great option. Um, as far as other players, I think Detroit might be able to go after. Um, it's a lot of wingers. There's not a lot of centers. And I think if Detroit tries to like convince themselves to just take a center, they might be disappointing. Because if Larkin's not there, which is a good chance, because I think TSN's board had him ranked 12th. So there's definitely a good chance he might not make it to 15. They got to have their options open, and I don't know. There's there's a couple options that I think I, I'm not really a huge fan of. You got Fiala, and I think it's Fabry is how you pronounce his last name. Both are 5'10", you know, smallish wingers. I th Actually, I think Fiala can play center, but I'm not really quite certain about that. So I, I don't know. I wouldn't really be a huge fan. I, I like the players that are available 20 and back. I like those players a lot more than the guys that are available 10 to 20. Just because, I don't know, there's just something about them that's making them fall. Like, you got Josh Hosang, who's completely been a huge story the last week because of his comments he's made during interviews saying that he's the best player in the draft and that he would draft himself first overall. You know, he's, you know, very, comes off as arrogant. But he actually is a very good player, and I think he actually w should be ranked higher than he is. I wouldn't be opposed to Detroit drafting him. I mean, I remember when Detroit drafted Andreas uh, Athanasiu, he had, like, the same things that were around. He didn't have – he had kind of character issues. But, I mean, look at that now. That's turning out to be a huge pick because he's been great. Um, so I think Hosang would definitely be a similar pick. And as I said, Sherback would be my favorite pick in the draft. Um, you got Alex Took, who I think would also be a decent player. But – uh, he was originally a center, but he's getting listed more as a winger now, and it's like, okay, if you're going to draft a winger, I would rather have somebody who's a little bit more flashy, personally. But, I mean, there's a lot of safe picks. Um, I think Adrian Kemp could also be a surprise pick, even though he's ranked around the 25 range. Because um, you never know how Anderson views some of these Swedish prospects, because anything can happen in that case. But he could be a surprise pick. I'm pretty sure he can play center as well. Um, he's got a lot of raw talent. And, uh, you never know. If uh, Anderson sees something, he might just tell Holland to pick him. So, Because uh, an interesting statistic, uh, I think it was 1992 was the last year Detroit did not draft a Swedish player. I mean, that's over 20 years ago, which is pretty ridiculous. But I'm running out of time here, so I think I'm going to wrap it up. I think I got my point across. Um, I'll see you guys later.